Hey, it's Will from EDM Tips. So today I want to show you how to make a techno breakbeat style music in the style of Kaz. Kaz Street? Kaz Street? Cast? Cast? I don't know how it's pronounced. Those guys anyway. Because they've got a couple of styles they produce. Banging four to the floor techno. This more ethereal breakbeat style. I prefer the breakbeat style personally, so that's what I'm going to be producing today. And as usual, you can download the project file, all the presets completely free below this video. I'm gonna create this completely from scratch, programming all the drums, creating every sound from scratch so you can see the entire process. I just wanna give a quick shout out to our Accelerator student, Zoya, who got her new track played on Radio One last week, which is a massive win. So well done, Zoya. I'm gonna to link to that track below this video. You can check it out as well. Okay, so without further ado, let's hop into the door and get it done. Breakbeat techno in the style of K-A-S colon S-T. First thing we're going to do is select the tempo and talk about the vibe. Then we are going to go into programming those breakbeaty drums. Then we've got the bass line, we've got the techno synths. Everything is going to be sweet, sweet, sweet. So 128 BPM and then let's have a quick talk about the vibe. So when it comes to cast or whatever they're called, uh, they have two types of music. It's kind of like the four to the floor techno and then they've got this more breakbeaty sound. I'm going with the breakbeaty sound today. But... Their music's always kind of quite dystopian, it's quite nihilistic, especially their techno stuff. So we need to bear that in mind and make sure we're choosing sounds and chords and things like that that are gonna work within that vibe. And yeah, let's get straight to it. First thing we're gonna do is create a, the kick line and then the main snare over that. So let's just go to my favorite kicks. Really good idea to get some favorite folders, everybody. That sounds quite cool, nice and deep. And we're going to go for a kind of 808 sounding kick. So once I've programmed it in, I'm actually going to take out the low end, and then we're going to program in our own subline. And there's some cool stuff you can do with that. So let's just program in a kick pattern. Now, what I'm going to do is make sure that I've got sustain to full, only a little bit of release and no decay. And that means every time that the MIDI note stops, our kick stops as well, which is great. Let's turn on the metronome so we can help with this. So what I'm doing is just working on the 16ths, like so. And these little ghost kicks, I'm going to make a bit shorter as well. And that's just to kind of help augment the, the main kick, just add some more groove and rhythm to it. So let's just take those, whoops. Take those down in length. Come on, get in there. Dun, dun, da, da, dun, dun. Cool. So that is the rhythm that we are going to repeat. And again, just work on the 16th there. Now let's get that kick baseline in there. So what I'm going to do for this is use uh, synth and I'm just going to use the operator because I want to stick to using the Ableton plugins if I can. So let's get that on there. And let's just call that kick sub. Yeah, let's call that kick sub too. Color it green, the natural color of drums and then color the clip tree green. And then we're just going to use a normal sine wave, and that's going to be a nice clean sub. So this is what's going to bring the sub power to our track. Now I'm just going to use this up here as a template, and just copy the same exact same pattern as the kick, because that's all this is doing. Cool. So now let's take the sub bass out of this kick so we don't have too much going on in the low end. Just going to roll it off. And let's see if we can take that down a bit. No, that's too low, so we'll keep it on this one. And the good thing about having the sub line separately from the main kick is that you can then change the pitch of the sub bass without changing the tonality of the mid and top parts of the kick. 
So if we actually select our scale here, scale, G sharp minor, and then press the scale button, we can actually move some of these notes if we want. So I'm just moving up a few of them to the perfect fifth of this scale, which in this case is a D sharp. Just add some more movement to the sound. Cool, okay. Let's uh, make sure that our synth is set to monophonic because we don't want these bass notes rolling onto each other because now we're gonna tweak the shape slightly to give it more of that 808 kick feel, which means less sustain and a bit of release. So it takes a bit longer to die out now. And that's why it's really important to choose monophonic here so that those bass notes aren't rolling into each other. Anyway, okay, on to the next thing. We are gonna choose a snare, or at least something that's gonna do the job of a snare. But in this instance, we are kind of basing this on the idea of their track, Utopia. So we need to name this bad boy, don't we? Okay, what should we call it? Cast, cast Utopia. Let's call it, um, Utopuree. I don't know how to sp spell it. That stuff you get in a bowl that's all like dried f petals. Utopuree. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, you could probably sell that. Yeah, cool. Communist uh, potpourri. Utopuree. Okay, let's get it. Now we are going to go and find a rim shot to do this job. So we're going to go to samples. I'm just going to search rim shot. Actually, I'm going to go into splice because I know I've got a nice sound that knocks. It, it's just kind of... It, it's kind of a rim shot, but it's already had some processing on it in the sample. And that's kind of the frequency I want to be hitting with this. So it's really short and sharp. You know, it's not like a big snare or a crispy clap. We will need to turn it down though, it's going to be a bit loud. But we're going to layer this up with another sound as well. Once we programmed it in. And I'm going to put a little skip here. Again, it all happens on the 16th when it comes to rhythm. So my grid is set to 16th and all I've done is just move this one hit here. So that's kind of cool. And uh, let's do that for the last one as well. Just a little skip. And now let's find another drum to kind of layer with that. Just to give it a bit more body, then we're gonna add some reverb to it. So we go rim shots. That's quite snappy, let's use that one. I'm gonna make sure that I pull it forward so the sample starts exactly when it's played, because there's a bit of space in front of that one. There we go, duplicate that, and let's just bring it down in volume. Just gives it a little bit more punch. Cool, now let's add a little bit of reverb to it. Now you'll notice I've got these reverb channels set up in the auxiliary channels. I'm going to use the room reverb, and if we go back to our drum rack, and open up the routing here with this little button and this little button here. You can right click and say create return chain. Then you can choose the room reverb uh, from your global auxiliary channels. And then when you close it all up again and just leave S, which stands for sends pressed, then you can see we can access our reverbs for each specific drum, which is really useful. reverb a bit longer. Cool. Quite like that. Now let's get the other drums in. I'll just make these a little bit quieter because now the reverb's on, it's quite loud. Okay, what we're going to do is put a shaker on every other beat and then we're going to add those 16th hats to give that great beaty shuffle. 
So I'm just going to go and find a suitable shaker. Uh, and if we go to shakers, this one will do. Let's put one on every other beat, but make sure that the velocity is back up again. And I'm going to take the velocity down a little bit for every other shaker. And that's just to add a little bit of movement and interest to the track. And I'm just playing with the sample start point here because it was a bit too, you know, slow to trigger there because of this big attack. So let's bring it in. Cool. Now let's add the shuff shuffle and let me know if you're enjoying this so far, guys. Let me know in the comments what you want to see me cover on this channel. It's all good and I love to read them and see what you guys want me to do. So what I'm going to do is find a closed hat. Here we go. Let's just use an 808 closed hat. A bit quiet, this sample, actually. So I'm just going to turn it up a bit and program it in on every 16th. And again, you can kind of adjust the velocity slightly of each of these, and it's just going to add more natural movement and kind of human feel. And more of a human feel to it. I mean, it's too loud at the moment. So I'm just going to copy them, paste them and take it down a little bit in volume. Okay. I've got my magic list as well. It's going to be useful. So next thing we're going to do is add some extra drums to add some more layers and interest. And let's just call that extra snare. And that's really important. You know, keep that interest going, keep that ear candy going. And except in this instance, I'm going to actually just take some sounds from a loop because that's going to add another kind of, yeah, another layer, another texture that we haven't got with just samples. Because each loop has a kind of a different texture to it. Like you can hear this one's quite compressed and it's got some weird filters on it. So I'm just going to have a sip of coffee in my awesome mug, which you can now buy below this video. But what we're going to do is just use a bit of this. So if we go, see, I like this little skip here. I think that's kind of got a cool texture to it. So I'm going to grab that and probably this one as well. Let's just have a quick listen. Yeah, okay, we're going to have these. I'll have you, son. And then we are going to program them in again on those 16ths to add a little bit more interest to the rhythm. And the last thing we're going to do is have a snare happen uh, kind of layered up on top of the normal snare or the normal rim shot just at the end of each bar to add more interest. So what we're going to do is actually look for some kind of intro. Um, okay. Too big. That's cool. We want a kind of real drum sound. This is going to be quiet. So we can have this just at the end. Maybe don't use all of them, a bit too much. Just something like that, just a little, you know, don't go over the top. That's cool, I like that. Okay, next thing we've got on my magic list is an atmosphere layer. 
And then we're going to go on to creating the mid bass line because we've already got the sub bass handled. But first, I need you to give me a hell yeah or an amen brother below this video in the comments because it lets me know if I'm doing something that you enjoy. And don't forget, you can download this project file and all the samples and presets completely free as well with the link below this video. Okay, let's create that atmosphere. We, we just want to gel this all together with like a bit of audio glue, if you will. This is like Gorilla Glue, but for ears. So we're going to go Atmos. And you can use these techniques for other genres, of course. It's just, um, I want to do this one. And I'm just going to randomly grab uh, an effect. Atmosphere. I've got some I recorded from around the place. Oh, that's kind of cool. I'm just going to use this cheer sound, but I'm going to take just a little bit out of it. Here we go. So let's consolidate that so we're taking out um, the superfluous information at either end. Let's just hold shift and drag it. So now all we're going to do is just I think we might uh, pitch shift this just to make it a bit more interesting. Let's turn it to Complex Pro. And then we are going to filter out some of those frequencies as well. But I'm going to use reverb on this to push it back in the mix on the channel itself rather than the auxiliary channel. And that's going to really take out that transient energy. So just a short decay. So this is where we were, and this is where it is now. Just kind of smooths it off a bit, which is great for a background sound. And we're going to filter out some of those frequencies. This really is just like a quiet background layer that's going to loop in the background to add an extra layer to our drums. And actually what we can do, which I hadn't thought about because we're not using the sidechain channel at the moment, but what I'm going to do is use the uh, same rhythm from the kick for the sidechain trigger. Uh, so if we do that, let me just get rid of all those sidechain things. And now what we can do is use that sidechain channel to duck some of the stuff. So if we put a compressor on our atmosphere, open up the sidechain options, choose the input from our sidechain channel, which is just like a little rim shot playing in a sampler. And in the routing, I've set it to sends only, so you never actually hear that rim shot. Now we can just use it to trigger our sidechain compressors. So let's have a look. So now our atmosphere ducks in time with our sidechain trigger. Too much though. And we're going to use this same channel on our hi hats too, our closed hats, just to make them have a bit more groove. So if we listen to our hats now, our hi hats. It's just ducking a little bit, a little bit more interest. Okay, cool. So this is what we got so far. Let's turn on all our drums. Right now onto the most important bit. That's not the most important bit, but today I'm going to say it is. We're going to create our chord progression. So let's just duplicate all these drums. Lovely jubbly. Have a sip of coffee. Yum, yum, yum. And then we're going to make a bass sound from scratch. And I'm going to use the wavetable for this. And what we're going to do is create a kind of Reese bass. So a sustained bass line that's going to sound really rich. And we're going to add some unison, which is going to thicken it up, give it some stereo width. Uh, so let's just turn it down a bit. Take the frequency down. Well, first, let's make it nice and sustained with the ADSR controls. And we'll make it polyphonic. 
So again, the bass notes don't bleed into each other. And now let's add some, or take out some of those high frequencies with a filter. Add some unison to thicken it up. Nice. I like this one. Now we're going to take out the low end here because we've already got the sub bass being handled by this line. So we don't want our, we don't need all this sub information. It still sounds like bass, even though we've taken out everything under about 100 hertz. And the way that we're going to work out the bass line, we are just going to make a nice big clip, color it yellow, natural color of bass, and then we're going to choose our scale, which is G sharp minor. And then every note that we hit within this scale, it's easy to start on the root note, you know, that's, a, that's usually a, an easy place to start. And you can write the bass line a couple of octaves up because it's mm -hmm. easier to hear the pitch of the notes. So just work out what's going to sound good for you. Um, And then, um, and remember, we're keeping in mind the dystopian feel, the kind of minor, quite yeah, nihilistic feel of this track. So we don't want anything happy. God forbid. Although I'm happy doing it. That's a cool bass line. Let's uh, let's just keep it to that length consolidate it, and then duplicate it. But actually, we need to drop it a couple of octaves, don't we? That octave, I think, works best. And we could even try putting the sidechain compressor on the end of the bass as well and duck that a little bit. Gives the kick a little bit more space to cut through. Okay, that's cool. What's next? Next, we are going to make a kind of a, a synth melody. So let's just kind of get these drums all locked up and out of the way because they're all done and dusted. And then let's create our synth melody. Natural color of synth is, of course, cyan. We all know this, guys. Come on. This is basic stuff now. Create the clip, call it melody, keeping stuff organized, really important. And I'm just going to, again, use a wavetable. Uh, I don't know what this melody is going to be, but I do know it's going to be in the same scale. So I can just choose G sharp minor and any note I hit is going to sound good, basically. haven't done any of the sound design yet. Now, I'm doing something here when it comes to melody writing. These are just, you know, little motifs, but you'll notice they follow a similar pattern and they occur at the same place in each bar. And that's to add repetition and familiarity. You don't really want your melodies jumping all over the place. Repetition in every bar at least in either the pitch or the pattern, is going to help it sound more, like a more cohesive melody. So there's a bit of a tip for you. Uh, but let's work out the notes and then we'll choose a sound that works well with it. So 
but you can see the same one, two, three, and then there's a little variation here as we go one, two, three, four, and then the one, two, three, and then the one, two, three again. So let's choose a sound. I'm just going to kind of scroll through some presets on this and see if any sound good. I think this is probably an octave too high though. So let's see what, what you got for me, wavetable sounds. Wow, you're quiet, aren't you? Oh, that's loud, but I like it. That's a lot. But what we want to do now is add some real size to this on the auxiliary channel. So I'm going to create a, an auxiliary channel just for this. Let's call it Melody Effects. I'm going to color it a kind of pale cyan color so I know that's what it's referring to. Now, synth. And then I'm going to do a couple of things here. I want to use a, the Sound Toys crystallizer here, but I'm going to try and keep everything to. Uh, Ableton plugins only. So what I am going to have a play with is the hybrid reverb because it's got some pretty cool presets in there. Turn it to 100% wet because it's on the auxiliary channel and we don't want that dry signal doubled up. Otherwise it's just going to be increasing the volume and that's not what we need. Hybrid reverb, special. Okay, let's just have a play with some of these, shall we? I'm just going to loop this little bit so we can hear what these effects are doing. That's kind of cool. Now, if we really want to spice things up, we are going to add a delay on there as well. And we are going to add a, this is going to be interesting. Where's the filter delay? Do we still have that? Yeah, we still have that in this. So I'm going to turn down the dry wet because some of this filter delay is going to be operating. So it's just creating a bit more of an interesting sound. Let's see if we can do something with the shifter as well. I might regret this. This is completely on the fly. So it's just adding another layer. So it's not the crystallizer, but it's still a cool effect that's pitching out our sounds as well. And we're just going to make sure that we've got the low end in check and we're not having too many frequencies down there on the auxiliary channel. Otherwise it could muddy up our mix. No. It's all about the textures in this kind of music. That sounds nice. frequencies we don't want in this channel. That's a bit better. Last thing I'm going to do is add a delay on the channel itself, which I don't often do, but I want this to be happening before we even hit the auxiliary, um, the auxiliary send controls. So I'm just going to do a really short, tight feedback uh, with a ping pong delay. I'll turn off the auxiliary channel just so I can hear what's going on. Change that to note.
and it's just to add that little extra effect. So this is with it off. Yawn, boring. This is with it on. Wow, that's literally the best thing I've ever heard. So simple. And now let's put the uh, melody delay back on. Now with this bass, I'm gonna add a little bit of interest, a cheeky little bit of interest. I'm gonna assign this LFO one. We'll make sure it's quite slow. We're gonna assign a little bit of this to the filter envelope, uh, sorry, the filter frequency cutoff point. And this is just to add some movement. So you can hear it opening up now. But we don't want this re-triggering, do we? So perhaps we can sort that out there. So it's just adding some movement to our bass. See, we got the LFO just tickling the bass now, and that's what we nice, and that's what we like, a nice little tickle. Well, I actually preferred it for whatever. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is add some lush pads to this, and we're almost done in terms of getting this vibe on the go. So let's call this pad. Again, I'm gonna just do this from scratch with a, a wave table. It seems to be the synth of the day after a sip of coffee. And again, we want this to be a saw wave. Nothing complex. You know, quite often the sounds that you, you work out don't have to be complex. It's a pad, so we need full sustain, a bit of attack, a bit of release, which it already has. And now we're just going to make it into a saw wave or somewhere along those lines. Take the frequency down, add some unison, add some reverb on the aux channel. And suddenly you've got a really lush, deep sound without having to do much work to it. So now let's play this over the top and see what we've got. Taxi. And now we can work out some nice chords that's gonna work with this. I'm just gonna play two notes at once like a, a harmony rather than a full on triad. And I'll take out the low end because we don't want it cluttering up the mix. Okay, now we've got our key selected, G sharp minor, our scale. So let's just program some of this in. I think I made the grid too fine. Oh, I can't remember. Why is the grid just suddenly going off? Never mind. Maybe I've turned the grid off by mistake. Let's have a look. Um, do 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 do. Lock to grid. Fix grid. Snap to grid. Okay. Oh, I turned on fix grid. I don't like fix grid. I like to be able to resize it. So let's just bring these out. So it's kind of following the bass. See if this actually works. That's
Let's see if this progression works. Mmm. Yes, very nicely. Very nicely, sir. Let's duplicate that. And there's only a couple more things to do. I'm going to work out some kind of vocals for this. But I want to add one little more rhythmic element, which I think is just going to set this bad boy off. So we're going to call this sign beep. And again, we're going to color it this. And this reminds me, I'm just thinking of a computer game I used to play on the Amiga called Banshee. And it had this sign beep in the title music. Nice and high up. And this is just what we're going to do to add another layer of both rhythm and texture to this track. We're going to keep it nice and high so it's out the way of all our bass frequencies. We'll have to make this short and sharp though, of course, otherwise it's going to bleed into each other. I know what we need to do. We need to keep the sustain up so we can sustain it there, which means that we're going to have to make these other notes just a bit shorter so they don't run into each other. And you can actually hear the separate notes. Like that. It's kind of like a Morse code. Ah, oh, maybe that's why they did it in that game. That makes sense. Nice choice. Now this could be a bit much, but what I want to do is create this into a syncopated um, pattern that's running on its own rhythm. So what I'm doing, instead of just duplicating it and doing it on every four beats like that, or you know every eight beats like that, uh, is that right? Sorry, or every eight beats like that. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to do this on every six. Actually, that might be too much. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to duplicate it this amount. So I'm selecting six beats here, and now it's going to drift off time, but should work with the rest of the track. So it's it's subtle. That's it. Cool, so that was just a bit of an impromptu bonus, but let's get a vocal on here. We know what the track is in the key of, it's G sharp minor. So let's open up Splice, and I'm just gonna search for, uh, let's browse, vocal, now in Utopia, uh, the track by Cast or Cast, whatever, it's kind of like a shamanic type vocal, um, you know. So something like that would be would be nice. Uh, but we're just going to find a vocal that sounds good. It doesn't sound cheesy. So what I'm going to do is go key, sharp keys, G sharp minor, like so. And you could search for. A, a vocal in any key really, any minor key, and then we could transpose it, but this is just going to be quicker and easier today, so let's do that. Make sure it's not too loud. Oh. That is way too loud. That just hurts my ears. I'm just going to drag this one in because it's too loud already. Um, let's just bring that in. Now we can see here that it tells us this is 140 BPM, so we need to warp it correctly first, which means doing that. It's going to automatically warp it to the tempo of your project, but you don't want that. You need to warp it to the tempo that the vocals were recorded in. So 140 BPM, Complex Pro, and now that should be in time with the track. Uh, let's bring it so 
the vocals are hitting at the beginning. That's too loud. Turn it right down, right down Kendall. Okay, that's cool, but I actually want these vocals to to last a bit of a longer time. So I'm going to take that one over. I'm going to take this one over. And I'll take this one over as well. And the way we need to draw these out is to add some delay. So each one's going to last a bit of a longer time. So we can create our own vocal channel, auxiliary channel, Vox Dell. Color it purple to match the vocals. And then we are going to just add an echo and we'll make a really slow delay, I think. Uh, whoops, that's really fast. Uh, ping pong, 100% wet, bit of feedback. Take the stereo width in and then just add a bunch of it to our, to our vocals. But we want to add some reverb to this, so I'm just going to use the same reverb, the whole reverb that we use for another element, what the pad, just for speed. And let's make it a bit longer actually. To make it more ethereal. And I've taken the low end out of the reverb as well. Let's take out the low end from the vocals. Turn the reverb down a tiny bit and let's see what we got. Probably make it a bit quieter. So now we've got this really atmospheric. Breakbeat kind of track, which is nice. And then you can open up the frequency spread and stuff as well. And then turn stuff off. Let's just add some, a little bit of mastering on the master channel, just to tighten everything and bring it together. Oh, we can add a, just getting carried away now, drum bus. because I'll deafen you and it'll distort for YouTube. Anyway, there you have it guys. That is how to create some kind of techno style breakbeat in the style of cast or cast or whatever they're called. And yeah, really hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget you can download this project file, all the samples and presets completely free below this video. And don't forget to check out our accelerator program if you want to work with me over several months, get one-on-one -on -one feedback, get your music up to a professional level as quickly as possible. Until next time, thank you for watching, cheers, and happy producing.